If you've had problems with an apron belly, I'm here today to discuss seven solutions for reducing the problems. Like physical awkwardness when your hanging belly is bumping your legs while you're trying to walk. That weird fungus-like smell that sometimes occurs under your mother's apron. And potential infections from skin rubbing on skin in the hot, moist environment beneath the panis belly. This is a horribly embarrassing problem to address. And while I know that it is temporary, as I continue to tighten my stomach muscles via exercise, lose weight, and reduce excess skin, I have to live with it in the meantime. I found seven things that make a big difference in comfortably living with an apron belly. I'm Jackie from reversingdiabetes.life here to answer your questions about my journey from fat, weak, and sick to trim, strong, and healthy. Leave your question in a comment so I'll know what videos to make next. Today I'm actually answering one of my own questions about my journey, how to live with this hanging belly while I work on fixing it. I searched the internet high and low and found either little but reassurance that this is perfectly natural. Yeah, I don't want to be reassured. I want to fix this, okay? The links to everything I'll be discussing today are in the description box below. And be sure to stay to the end where I'll also tell you the secret of fixing apron belly permanently. So here's the seven things I know. One, number one. You must keep the area clean. Now, I know sometimes myself in the winter, if it's cold and I'm not sweaty and I don't really feel like taking a shower, I might blow it off. But if you do that, if you don't shower every single day and clean very well and rinse very well, then at the very least, before you go to bed, grab yourself an antiseptic wipe and clean that area very thoroughly. That's part one. Part two is that you need to dry that area very thoroughly as well. And I do this with this amazingly warm and absorbent bathrobe. It has become a bit too big for me, but I still love it. Basically, what I do is I scoot that under my belly and then I sit for a little while. Just sit comfortably in my robe and that's going to remove every molecule of water that will dry you very, very, very thoroughly. But let me get this robe off because it's a bit warm for it today. Okay, so <coughs> number three is you need to protect that area. You don't want friction from the skin rubbing against the skin. What I use is coconut oil. And the reason I use coconut oil, first of all, it is moisturizing. It'll put a nice thin layer between the skin so that it doesn't rub against each other. But it's also got antibacterial, antiviral, and most critically, antifungal properties. It not only protects the skin, but it also prevents that weird smell and potential infections. The next thing you want to do is absolutely keep it bone dry. You don't need to be sweating under there. I mean, this acts like a deodorant in the sense that you don't have um, bacteria growth that cause smells, but it doesn't actually act as an antiperspirant. I first tried to use was a bandana, and I just folded it up and stuck it under there. That might work for you. It did not work for me. The bandana was just too rough for me. So what I ended up using is either an ABD or a combine pad. And what this looks like, It's just a bandage um, and you basically just fold it in half and stick it under there 
and it will absorb any liquid and thus prevent you from ending up with um, a bunch of moisture under there. The fifth step is what do you do if hello Kanga what do you do if you do get an infection? And at that point before you put the combine pad on, what you need to do is use either something like Neosporin or triple antibiotic lotion just on that spot. The rest should still be coconut oil, but do it just to kill off that infection temporarily. The next thing I want to discuss, if Kanga will let me have my pants, could I have my, hello kitty, I need my visual aid here. Hello, could I have this kitty? Kanga. Kanga. <laughs> These don't work for me anymore because I've lost a lot of weight. But when I first began this journey, yoga pants were extremely helpful for me because the ones I bought were slightly tight and they're basically spandex. So it's like wearing a um, a foundation garment or something. I would put them on and then I would stand up and lift my belly up so that it would hold it. And that made walking so much easier and more comfortable. And since I had begun walking at that juncture with kitties, Kanga being one of them, um, since I had begun walking then, um, that made it much more comfortable. I didn't have to deal with the belly flapping up against uh, my legs as I was walking. Finally, the last thing I found useful was I found a website where people were talking about this and like all the rest of them it just kept telling me how this was perfectly normal but there was one person who discussed wearing a belly band, a pregnancy belly band, but wearing it backwards. Okay, that sounds a little weird and it took me a little while to figure out. So I made this video some months ago. Um, the belly band no longer fits me. Um, the belly band consists of three bits and you are going to wear them backwards. The, the first bit, which is intended for the pregnant woman as the back support and I'm sorry, as the belly support, this being this piece. Wow, I hope I did a better job when I actually recorded the video. <laughs> it's all Velcro, so it's really easy to deal with, and you can make it as loose or tight as you want. So, this is the big main piece. Okay, and this big main piece is going to hold your belly. And then this piece which is also velcro the second piece that's sticking to me the second piece um is going to connect and hold on to that first piece and then the third piece is basically to give support to that first piece so it doesn't slide away you can see mine has a big old safety pin in it but it basically just i didn't have any more bigger safety pins so I kind of outgrew that. Um, but luckily the video I made was made while I still needed the belly band and so that will be useful for you. I made this video six months into my journey. As you can see there's no way to tell I'm wearing panties at the beginning. That was seven months ago and I just hate this video so it's taken me this long to fix it. When I lift my belly up you can see that I am actually wearing panties and this is the exercise that I do to continue tightening my belly. I start off by showing you how to put the ABD pad on and as you can see I have enough belly to hold the darn thing back then. No longer do but uh, I can keep myself dry just by sticking that under there. Um, next I'm going to start showing you how I put the belt on. So first you take the main belt 
and that's going to go around your waist. Uh, all these pieces have Velcro on them, so we're all good with Velcroing them up. So this goes around the waist, well, such as there is. I didn't have much waist yet back then. Um, and goes on just tight, just snug, not tight, just to be comfortable. Next, we're going to get the second piece, which is what's actually going to hold our bello belly in and up. So, uh, getting all the Velcro disconnected, and it will attach onto the first piece, the belt. So the belly bit, you put the smaller bit up, and I center it on my belly first. And then... Once it's well centered, I pull it a little bit on one side and attach it to the belt. Then I'm going to pull it a little bit on the other side to about the same amount. Now, the amount you actually choose depends on what's comfortable for you. However, if you do it too tight, it's not going to stick, not at this juncture. We need the third piece to make it actually stay on. This is barely held together by some Velcro right now. This piece, which also has more Velcro on it, um, will attach to both pieces and thereby make the whole thing sturdy enough that you can actually start adjusting your belly. And as you see, I lift my belly up. And as I do so, the panties begin to show belly is getting off of my legs. I originally got this so that I could walk, but it turned out to be very comfortable. This is not the type of thing you're wearing as a girdle to hold your belly in or to make yourself look smaller. It's for comfort. And I actually found this comfortable to just sit around the house in. And even on occasion, I slept in the thing. Just having your belly off your legs provides a great deal of comfort if you're not putting it on too tight. So after all my adjustments, which took longer because I was recording <laughs> than it normally did, um, I then went and put some pants, yoga pants on to show you what this ends up looking like. And it's quite comfortable. And as you can see, my belly is off of my legs entirely. This is the product I bought, and you can find a description in the box below. You may have noticed at the start I mentioned that I was tightening my stomach muscles, losing weight, and reducing excess skin. I demonstrated the simple method of lifting your belly, and I try to remember to do that numerous times throughout the day. I'm doing it right now because I'm remembering. But as for losing weight and reducing loose skin, what I do is based on something called autophagy, which Dr. Jason Fong taught me about. Autophagy is the process by which little bits inside of your cells called lysosomes eat up all of the bad things, proteins that are malformed or organelles like mitochondria that are not working properly, and they eat that all up and they use that as starting material to rebuild. It's basically like recycling, except I'm doing it to save my body rather than the planet. Autophagy is a very deep and profound healing process. But I didn't start this journey to lose weight or minimize skin. After over 30 years as a T2 diabetic and over 12 of those years on injected insulin, multiple daily injections of insulin. I was very, very ill. I nearly died several times and was frankly expecting to die within months. I began this to discover if I could reverse my diabetes, the root of all my health problems. Dr. Fung taught me about how fasting, either intermittent or extended fasting, could induce autophagy in reverse diabetes. I had nothing to lose, so decided to try it. 
Of course, you have to eat sometimes, and given I was eating so much less often, I needed for my meals to be as nutritionally dense as possible, but I didn't have the energy or financial resources for complicated meal plans, expensive diets, specific ingredients, and hours in a hot kitchen doing meal prep. Been there, done that. It's not for me. I was just too sick for all that. Luckily, my friend Amanda had lost 100 pounds in eight months, avoiding a planned bariatric surgery, and then went on to maintenance where she lost another 40 pounds to become half her starting weight. She calls what she does eating like a bear, and dozens of women have lost over 100 pounds in the program short to your existence. Eating like a bear combines a simple, nutritionally dense way of eating with the benefits of autophagy, which massively reduces loose skin. If you don't believe me, click the video that appears at the end to see what happened to Amanda's skin. And if you're a T2 diabetic, know this, autophagy kicks diabetes to the curb. Okay, I think that worked. Thank you for assisting me, Kanga. My Hello, kitty. I need my visual aid here. Hello, could I have this kitty? Kanga. Kanga. Ugh.